Why do some people always seem to have money and other people don't? Well, it's not just about luck. It's about how they think, how they think about money. And the way people, the way wealthy people think about money is completely different than the average Joe. And in this video, I'm going to highlight five main differences in how they think and then how you can take each one of those and start using them today. Number one, more than likely, you've probably heard this before, but the wealthy people in this world have an abundance mindset, okay, when it comes to money. They don't always sit around worrying about running out of money and they don't sweat the little things. So if, if they're going to go out and they're going to go buy gas, they're not going to worry about what the cost of gas is. They're going to go to lunch. They're not looking at the menu. Oh, I can only order an appetizer or just get bread or water or whatever. When they go buy clothes, they're not always looking at the price tag. I remember when I was in my residency, having to go to the grocery store and I had to walk around with, you know, I knew how much money was coming in for my student loans every month. So I knew exactly what I could spend. And now I can just go in and spend whatever I want to on the food. But I don't take that for granted because I remember how I used to be. Okay. So used to be and what's now, a lot of times you got to block that. Okay. But the wealthy people, they don't, they don't sweat all these small things. They don't look, you know, I was going around looking at my bank account in the grocery store. They don't do that. They don't look at, oh, I only have so much in my checking account before they make a purchase. They spend money because they need these things and it's not worth their time and their energy, their mental energy to pinch every single penny and find deals. All right. That's number one. Number two is this. And the, the, the people, the doctors, the dentists, the attorneys, the, the people that have gone to school a long time know about this delayed gratification. Because what did we do when we graduated? We kept going to school, right? You know, I finished college. I did four years of dental school. I did another four years of residency while all my other friends were getting out at 21, making all this money. So we automatically understand what it is to delay gratification. The wealthy people understand that too. That's a mindset because delayed gratification leads to what? Better results. So rich people, they understand they make money. And instead of going out and, you know, if I can talk to somebody right out of school, right out of the training to, to get this, to get this delayed gratification, just to continue it a little bit longer, it will make, it will, it'll, it'll change their life, completely change their life. So instead of getting out, they, they start, they go from making nothing, having student loans to making bank and, and buying the cars, buying that big house, buying the boats, buying whatever, going on these expensive vacations right off the bat, because in their mind, they're like, Hey, I've delayed gratification. I deserve it. No, you don't. You don't until you can do this. You can delay your gratification. You can take that money. You can put it in cash flowing, appreciating assets that now are going to start paying you. They're going to start pay paying you for the mortgage. I've got a trailer park in South Louisiana, pays our mortgage. Did they teach me that in school? No. But once you start thinking differently, and now I've taken myself out from having to see patients out of the picture, I've got something that is paying, I have an asset that's paying for my liability. So the, the wealthy people, they get that. They understand that if they do that, then a few, year, few years later, they delay the gratification. And even though if you're still making the same amount of money, it's it now you have to look at who is paying for your expenses. Their assets are paying for their liabilities, okay? Think about getting in shape. Same type of thing, delay gratification, right? This is, this is a mindset. So if, so if somebody is overweight, you know, if, if you got a wealthy person and they're overweight, they understand it, it's really tough to go from being overweight to, you know, getting really good in shape overnight. Why? Because you don't just go to the gym once, right? You don't just work out once and, and you're, you're automatically ripped. You got the six pack abs. You have to consistently put in the work for months and months and years sometimes to really see the results. But here's the thing. Once you get into shape, it's a whole lot easier. Now, if they want to have a cheat meal, they want to go out and they want to have a, a beer or something with their friends. They want to have the dessert, whatever. It's not going to make that big of a dent in their overall physique and their overall diet and training because they're already healthy. Why? They've delayed the gratification and they, and they built the person already. All right. Number three, and I know you've heard this before, but let me say it again. Most people say that time equals money. It doesn't. Time doesn't equal money. The, the wealthy people understand that time is infinitely more valuable than money. Wealthy people get this. They understand that 
They only have so much time to spend in the day. So they only have so much time to spend with fr- friends, so much time to spend with family and doing things and doing the things that they enjoy. So because of this, they value their time. So they don't waste time on things, on tasks that they don't enjoy that's taking away from their time. But yet they're so much more profitable if they would spend two hours working on their business or making money or spending time with family and friends or whatever, instead of cleaning their house, instead of mowing the yard. Okay. They, they understand that they need to do this. They need to hire others. They need to hire professionals to come clean the house, to mow the yard, to do the things that other people can do, thus making their, making it more worth their while. Number four is this networking. I can't stress this enough. The rich people, they have a completely different perspective on networking, on their status compared to the average person. Jim Rohn once said, you are the average of the five people you spend your most time with. Who are you spending your time with? But think about it. If, if you want to get in shape and you're hanging around five people that never get off the couch, they play fantasy football, they drink beer all day long, and they order Domino's pizza. If you're hanging around all these people all the time, are you going to be in shape? No. But if you got people that are counting their calories, counting their macros, tracking their macros, they're getting up at five in the morning, they're going to the gym, they're running, they're playing tennis, they're, they're active, and you're always around them doing that. Are you going to be more in shape than the other people? Yes. So wealthy people, they have a vast network and they always seem to have somebody who can do whatever they need because they're connected. They don't just look at friends as just, oh, we're going to go out and we're going to have fun. We're going to go to the game. We're going to tailgate. But they also see the friends because they're hanging around with them because they understand what it means to network. They see them as potential business partners or people who can help them. And then they also, in return, can help them. Everybody helps each other. That's crucial to your success is is giving, going in. And when you're trying to break into a, a certain area or a certain group of friends, or you want to friend somebody, you want to bring them value first. You want to say, Hey, what can I do to help you? Not, Hey, can you do this for me? That's how most people approach it. There's people on my, uh, on my phone, whenever they call, they text me. It's, as soon as I see them on the phone, I was like, Oh, this wonder what this person needs or wants. And I don't want you to get labeled like that. Whenever you call or text somebody, they should look at it and go, Hey, wonder what he is calling me about to, to provide value, to give me, to educate me on, to help me with. That's the kind of connections you have. Okay. So remember, whenever you break into this, whenever you break into those contacts, you have no idea the different circles that you're now going to be exposed to the different events, the, uh, opportunities. I'm going to uh, Miami in a couple of weeks. You know, the guy's got like a 20, $30 million house. He's got the yacht. He's got the, uh, helicopters, all that. Do you think a guy from Podunk, Louisiana would ever get that here? No, you have to get into a different circle of people, influencers. And then once you're invited in, then you have access to other people. And then again, approaching those things with what you can provide, what what you can help with. All right. And then last but not least, the rich people, they avoid the victim mentality, which is running rampant today. Okay. So they steer clear of people, number one, with a victim mentality. And as soon as they start having those thoughts in their head, they immediately get rid of them. So for instance, if somebody is thinking, man, why does this always happen to me? Whenever they have an adversity, the wealthy people, they immediately think differently. They understand that is life fair? No, it ain't fair. It's not easy. But instead of complaining about it or dwelling on it, just on and on and on, all these negative thoughts, they understand time to push forward. So for instance, years ago, when I started investing in real estate, I got scammed out of 50 grand on this real estate deal. And I could have complained. I mean, of of course I was pissed off. It's not like, oh, I was happy. I'm going to move on. Of course I was pissed off. And of course I'm I'm sure I said a few times, why does this happen to me? But then I learned to push through it. And I've learned so much from that, which allowed me to number one, move on. But number two, learn from what happened and then educate. That's that's one of the main reasons I started my blog, debtfreedoctor.com, is to teach people what I was learning about real estate. And then when you have screw ups, if you if you look at somebody's YouTube channel or Instagram or blog, and you never hear anything about them screwing up, I would be weary of that. Everybody screws up. So I put that out there and because I don't want other people to have the same type of mistakes that I do. I want, I want, I learn from my mistake and I want other people to learn from my mistakes. So 
it wouldn't happen to them. The, the rich people, they firmly believe that the world doesn't owe them anything. And if they want something, they just simply go after it. You know, they see challenges as just obstacles in the road to success because the path to success is going to have a bunch of curves in it. It's going to have dips, it's going to have roadblocks. You got to go around, you got to figure it out. Now, I hope you like this. If you found it helpful, do me a favor, just one favor, because you stuck, you stuck with me to the end of this video. Simply take it, share it to somebody who you may think would benefit from it too, and you'll be surprised the feedback you'll get just from sharing it.